All right, so our goal for this is that we want to try and uh, create a walk the distance here. So we want to create a graph. We're going to walk this distance from zero to two meters, two to four meters. We're going to stay at four meters for two seconds and then walk to six meters and eight meters. Each time we cross one of these, we're going to go ahead and get our time that we're at that position. We want to create a graph uh, and then we want to calculate the speed and velocity. So uh, part of this is making sure you feel comfortable with uh, the graphing uh, Excel, getting a graph inside of here. Uh, and then also our speed and velocity calculation. So we went ahead and we did this classroom. Uh, I went ahead and just took some generic times here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use these times. So we're going to throw these times into our document here. So I'm going to start off. When you do a lap uh, on your iPad, it gives you the total time. Uh, for some reason, if you just use your iPhone or another phone, a lot of times you won't see this total time. But you can get those by just adding these up. So, uh, But we'll start right here. So it, kind of laps, the last laps on top. So we need to start with the bottom one right here. Uh, and that was 1.39 uh, to get to the two meter mark here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in here. The first time would just be zero. That's when we start. And then we went right here and we said that was 1.39. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Next one, I believe was 2.99. Now, if I look at just my lap, it's going to say 1.6. But I didn't take me 1.6 uh, seconds to go from 0 to 4. It took me 2.99 seconds to get to 0 to 4. It just took me 1.6 to get from 2 to 4. Okay, but we want that total time. So I'm going to get these total. If you just have it split like this, the split column, you just add these up. So my next one, I would take 2.99 plus 2.44. So, and it should give me 5.44 here. And that's because we're just standing there for that time. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and get my last two in here. So that's going to be 6.91 and 7.74. So 6.91 and 7.74. Okay, so once you got your table set up, if you're at home, you weren't able to come uh, in here for any reason, uh, follow along with me here. So if you need it, go ahead, pause this video. Uh, get it inside your Word document. You, the only thing you're going to be turning in is the Word document. After you have that, though, we're going to go to Excel. And I'm just going to copy and paste this into my Excel document here. So I'm going to hold on. I'm on a Mac, so Command-C to copy it. Uh, you can right-click copy as well. If you're on a PC, it's Control-C. Then I'm going to come to a blank Word document here. Okay, if you don't see an Excel program on your computer, you can also just go to the school website uh, and go to your Microsoft Office 365 account, uh, and you should be able to access it from there. But I'm going to go ahead and throw these, these data points right in here. Okay, so uh, the first thing I need to clean up this data a little bit. Now, if you just copied over, this step might be a little easier, but I need to get rid of all these meters. So I'm just going to go in each box here. And just I'm just gonna retype the number and nothing else. So four, six, oh, be eight right to this one. This one was six right here. Okay. I also want though at the top here, I want a header. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a row. So I'm gonna right click where the one is. My rows go across, my columns go up and down. And I'm just gonna hit insert right here. And the reason why is because I want to go ahead and put in time in this one and distance. Okay, so this is all the information I need to graph it out for me so we don't have to make our own graph here. The next step I'm going to go ahead and do, I don't need to recover that, okay, is I need to highlight this. Now, this is a little hard to see. I can zoom in a little bit here, okay? To do that, I just click and hold down on the time box, and then I drag my other finger over the amount I want, and that's all of these, okay? Now, it looks like time's not highlighted. It is. That's just indicating where it started. Once I have those highlighted, I'm going to insert, and then I'm going to go to uh, my graphs over here. So there's a lot of different options for graphs and charts. I want a scatter plot. So that's the one that looks like the dots, and I don't want to connect the dots. I just want it random dots here. Put this in, and there we go. This is exactly what I wanted. I might change my title here because this is technically a distance versus time graph. Uh, we could go ahead and do the labels for, for right now. Let's just keep it simple to this. Oh, cancel that. I actually was just trying to zoom down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so here's my graph. Notice how we walk to four meters. Okay, 
So now that we have a graph, I'm going to go up. That's a positive slope right here. Uh, I'm going to go and pause for two seconds right here. And then we're going to go up right here. So that's kind of our goal here is to identify the changing points in this graph. And this is just what we did. This was the walk, right? So we walked to four meters. We stopped. And we went again. Remember, our speed is equal to distance over time. Well, that turns out to be our slope. So it shouldn't be a big surprise to us when we're standing still that there's no slope here. Now that I have this table here and this graph, I want to go ahead and put this graph in my Word document, though. So I'm going to right-click this and do Copy. Go back to my Word document, and I want to be right here. Uh, so I want to make sure my cursor is below this, and I'm going to go ahead and hit just hit Paste. Okay, I can change the size of this a little bit, so maybe I can get it on that first page. There we go. Just shrink it just a little bit, but it didn't change any of my data points or anything like that. All right, um, so now we got our graph in here. The last thing we need to do for each of these is we need to go ahead and do our average speed and our velocities. So the time segments, we're looking for where it changes. So we have a nice linear slope right here until this time right here, and that's going to be 2.99. So my first time segment, I'm going to say, is from 0 to 2.99. We'll go ahead and write that in right here. So 0 to 2.99. And then so what is the distance in that time period? Well, from 0 to 2.99, I go 4 meters. So I put 4 meters here. And then what's the time? Well, from 0 to 2.99 seconds is just 2.99 seconds. I go ahead and I'm going to now throw this in my calculator. 4 divided by 2.99. That's going to get me 1.3 repeating-ish. So I'm just going to round here and we'll just call that 1.3 meters per second. Okay, that's this what this slope is representing. Remember, speed is just the slope of a distance first time graph. So that's a 1.3 rise over run right there okay but then it changes i no longer have a nice linear slope it flattens out so uh let's the time interval for that if i look at my graph right here so it's flat for these two points 2.99 to 5.44 because after 5.44 it starts to go up again so i'm going to put that right here so this is 2.99 to 5.4 but the nice thing here is what's the distance well, I started at 4, I ended at 4, right? We want the change. I didn't move any distance. That's 0. So I can still put in this time right here. Now the time is the difference of these two. Well, 5.44 minus 2.99, that would be uh, let's. That would be 3, so that would be 2.44, but then add one more, so 2.45. really doesn't matter because anything... Uh, Zero divided by anything is still going to be zero. So this should be zero. And that shouldn't be a surprise because I'm standing still, right? We went ahead and we stood still for two seconds. So I should expect a zero speed for those two seconds. My last time segment should be then where I left off 5.44, right? So that's that point right there. And then I started walking again to 7.74 seconds. 7.74. If I just look at the difference of these two, right? So I could take 7.74 minus 5.44. Uh, that's going to give me 2.3, I believe, here, seconds. And then I just need to figure out the distance. Well, I started at 4 meters. I ended at 8. That's going to be 4. So then I just take 4 divided by 2.3. And that gives me 1.739. We'll just round that to 1.7 meters per second. Now, these are speed, so there is no direction here. Now, what we need to do for the velocities is I just need to figure out, uh, we're going to keep this simple here, and I'm just going to say if it's a positive slope, that's going to be moving forward or a positive velocity. If it has, if it's going down, which the next one you should see is going down. If it's going down, that's a negative slope. That should be a negative velocity. But for this case, this is a positive slope. This is a positive slope. So all I'm going to do for these is I'm going to say this is a plus 1.3 meters per second velocity or 1.3 meters per second forward. You either can say forward or positive. Either one is fine there. Then I'm going to come to the next one. Well, that's zero. I'm not going to worry about direction because there's no direction with zero. And then the last one, 1.7 meters per second. Okay. Again, I could do this forward or to indicate a direction, I could do plus. Either one's fine with me. Okay. 
meters per second. Right, now you're going to do the same thing with these. Uh, if you aren't able to be here in school, I'll give you generic numbers for these. Uh, otherwise, go ahead and um, we'll, you'll be doing this in the class. But notice this one right here, you're going to be walking to four meters. You're going to stand still and then walk back. And then this one, you're going to start at six meters. Uh, go to two meters, then go back to 10. We'll graph, get your times, graph that on Excel as well. Find your distance and speed. And then this one, you start at 10, and then you go down to two, stand at six meters. Uh, so really, hopefully by the end of this, you're feeling more comfortable with graphing. Um, you're kind of understanding how distance and time relates to velocity, uh, and you can get those graphs on Excel, put them in here, and recognize the positive and negative slopes. If you have any questions, let me know.